Hey everyone, uh, my name is Kelvin. Uh, welcome to my video tutorial about how you can use the plain air watercolor effect for Photoshop. The first thing we'll make is just a basic image, just a basic square painting like this. Uh, and then after that, I'll show you how to make another square painting and then how you can modify those pencil lines and make them a little more customized. And then the, at the very end of the tutorial, I'll show you how to make isolated elements like this flower uh, and some of these leaves and I'll show you how to use those to create some kind of unique arrangements in Illustrator. So the first thing you'll do is download the folder and then it's a zip file so go ahead and unzip it and inside you'll see a couple different files. Uh, the first two are Photoshop documents. Uh, these are where the effect actually takes place and they're both exactly the same just a vertical one and a horizontal one. The size of these documents is 8 by 10 inches at 300 dpi. Uh, this image here is just a preview of the masks. So each of these documents has a variety of masks that you can uh, put on your image to give them a certain shape. Uh, totally optional. And uh, this will just help you see which masks look like what when they're applied to the image. And then finally here there's a readme file. And that's going to have a little information about this product. Links to this video. And it's also going to have my email address just in case you have any questions or comments or anything. Just send me a message and uh, I'll get right back to you. So for the first part of this tutorial, I'm going to use the vertical effect. So I'm going to open that by dragging it into Photoshop. And uh, it looks just like this. It comes with this image already loaded into it, just the default image. And uh, you can swap it out with yours in the Layers panel. So to open the layers, just go to Window and then Layers. And uh, this works basically via Smart Objects. So you'll need to replace your image in the Smart Object. So this is the Smart Object right here. And to open that up, just double click on this little icon, and that'll open a separate tab. Uh, so here's the original one with the effect. And then when we opened up that smart object, it opened up another tab up here. And uh, it looks exactly the same as the original effect, just without the watercolor effect applied. So it's got a mask on right now, this plain air mask number four. So if I turn that off, you can just see the raw default image here. I'll go ahead and delete that and then replace it with my own. So back to my desktop here. And uh, I'll use this image. I'll just drag it in. And uh, it's a pretty low resolution image, pretty small. Uh, this effect works fine on small images. I'll just scale it up and uh, enter. And then these, all these folders are masks, and they'll mask whatever's beneath them when they're visible. So when I click here, I can toggle the visibility on or off of any of these masks. Uh, they just they won't work if your image is above the mask, only if it's below. Uh, so for this demo, I'll just use one of these plain air masks. I think maybe number three is fine. And uh, obviously, my image is kind of small, so I'll scale that up. So I'll select my image and go to Edit, Transform, Scale. And uh, then I can scale it up to fill out the mask a little more. And uh, you can also uh, scale the masks and stretch them out and make them any kind of shape you want. Uh, just like any other object uh, in Photoshop. So if you want to do that, uh, just open up the folder that the mask uh, is inside. And uh, that's the mask, this little black box here. And just while that's selected, you can go to Edit, Transform, Scale. Uh, and then you could just kind of stretch it and distort it like any, uh, any other shape in Photoshop. So I'll try to line it up like, I think, just to the edge of the image there. And then... Uh, I'll press enter to go back into edit mode. I can close that folder. And uh, once you're happy with the way it looks in the smart object, you'll close and save the smart object to update it and then the effect will get applied. So I'll, I'll X out of the document tab up here. I'll press the little X. And uh, it'll ask you if you want to save it or not. Click yes. The smart object changed. It realized it changed so now it's going to work through applying the effect again. And that'll take like one or two minutes or something like that. But uh, I'll just fast forward it now to save time. So there we go. This is what it looks like after the effect has been applied. I'll zoom in here so we can get a closer look. We have a couple of options. So all these folders here in the original document that are sort of highlighted as green, and this one too, uh, these are all sort of modifiers. They modify the effect or the colors or the lines or anything like that. Uh, so most of the titles are pretty self-explanatory, but I want to point out just a few of them. And uh, the first one here is the pencil sketch. So if you turn that off, the pencil sketch effect will go away. Uh, turn it on, it comes back. 
And uh, this very last one here, that's the paper texture background. That's this texture out here. Uh, so it depends on what kind of project you're doing, but if you want that to go away, uh, just turn that layer off. And uh, uh, you can also make it stronger if you want by uh, increasing the opacity. So while it's selected, right now it's 20%, you could turn it all the way up to 84% and have like a really strong paper texture if you wanted that for some reason. <laughs> so 20%, that's the default. It looks pretty good that way. This one here, this on-off watercolor edges. So if I turn that off, we lose all of our sharp, sort of saturated edges on this effect. And if we turn it on, they come back. And if you want them to be stronger, you do the same thing you did with the paper texture background. You just make them uh, make the opacity stronger. So I'll select that folder. The opacity is at 50%. I could scale it up to 70% or whatever. And uh, it'll be much sharper and much stronger. 50% here is the default. We've got a few other ones like saturate colors. That'll make the colors pop just a little bit. Uh, and then these tone modifiers. So, for example, the indigo tone, it'll make everything monochrome, but in a kind of a bluish, kind of a dark bluish kind of color. So uh, that's pretty much it for just the basics of the effect. You'd export this just like any other image. So, for example, if I was going to print this out, then the paper texture is kind of redundant. Uh, so I'll close that. I'll make that invisible. Uh, and then I would go to File, Save for Web, and then make sure JPEG is selected here and uh, then I would just save it to my desktop, just like any other normal project. So for the second part of this tutorial, I'll show you how to edit those pencil lines, and I'll do it in the uh, vertical watercolor effect, just like the other one. So I'll drag it into Photoshop to open it up, and uh, I'll go right into the smart object, and uh, remove the default image, just hide that, and I'll turn off the mask as well. And then I'll just drag my image in from the desktop here. So this time I'll use this image, this Hawaii image, and this will kind of represent some of the major problems you can have with the pencil sketch effect. And then I'll show you how to solve them on this particular image. So I'll drag that in and scale it up. I think I'll use one of the plain air masks. So I think mask number three. Uh, I'll scale it so it fits the image a little better. And uh, I'll close the smart object to apply the effect. So this pencil sketch effect, it basically looks at the image and it'll put a line wherever there's a light color meeting a dark color. So you'll see a couple of areas here where, you know, almost towards the edge of the image there was some clouds or something, and then it kind of put a sort of an awkward pencil line around that. So the best way to solve that is to go back to the original image and then just darken those areas using the burn tool uh, in this area too. And uh, that'll make the pencil effect kind of ignore it and uh, instead skip over it and just go around the image uh, just around the sort of the edge of the image. So I'll go back into the smart object and uh, I'll select the image and in this case since I dragged it in from my desktop it's still linked there uh, so I want to make sure it's rasterized so I'll just go ahead and rasterize it uh, and then while it's selected I can go over here to the uh, burn tool this kind of pinchy finger icon and uh, wherever it was a sort of a dark area meeting a light area uh, that was making the pencil line get kind of weird I'll just darken that whole area up with the burn tool and uh, hopefully when we apply the effect the pencil line will ignore that part. So I'll just darken up there and just along this edge and down here as well. Okay, It doesn't take much, just a little bit darker and that's all it takes for that uh, effect to work properly. So I'll X out of it and save it to apply the effect. So there we go. It looks like the pencil effect is uh, working out much better. There's just a few areas here that I'd like to remove. It's up to you, but if you ever have parts of the pencil effect that you just want to erase, just, just erase those parts, uh, you can sort of merge the whole pencil effect group, turn it into an image, and then erase that. So for example, here's the group. I'll turn the visibility off, and then I'll just make a duplicate of it, just a copy. Uh, so I'll go up here to the... Uh, options here, duplicate group, and then OK. So now we've got two instances of the pencil effect. They're both exactly the same. This is just the copy here. And uh, see if I turn it on, there it looks just like before. I'll merge this into an image so then I can erase it just like an image. So I'll right click on it and then do merge group. And now it's turned that whole group into just a flat image and then I can select the eraser tool and then actually just erase any area that I want, just selectively. 
uh, and I don't have to go back into the smart object and change anything. So I'm just a little bit down there. There, that looks a lot better. So hopefully this is a pretty good overview of how you can modify those pencil lines and make them a little more customized. So for the final part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make isolated watercolor elements. So I'm just going to do this in the vertical uh, template again, and I'll go ahead and open up the smart object. I'll hide this image and uh, the mask as well, and I'll just drop in this sort of flower image uh, that I found before. And uh, it doesn't have a white background, so I'm going to have to remove that. So once it's in, I'll scale it up just a little bit, enter, and then I got to rasterize it because it's still connected to my uh, desktop here. So we'll rasterize it into a, just a regular image. Uh, and then I'll use the magic wand tool to remove this background. Uh, I'll just make sure that the tolerance is set to 30. And then I can hold shift and do a kind of multi-point uh, selection here. Uh, I'll go up to select similar, and that'll help. That'll select a few more uh, shades of this color. And that looks pretty good, so I'll clear it and deselect. And then I'll use the eraser tool to clean up some of these elements that got missed here. And this watercolor effect, it, you know, it does a pretty good job of ignoring some tiny imperfections. So when you're isolating objects, you don't have to spend a lot of time making it perfect. Uh, it'll probably turn out fine in the uh, end result there. So there we go. And I'll just move it down to the middle here so it looks a little neater. There we go. And deselect. And then I'll close and save the smart object just like before. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, I don't need that pencil outline, so I'll go ahead and uh, turn that one off. And uh, also, I don't need this paper texture on the background, so I'll turn that one off too. And uh, I'll add a little, little more saturation and uh, also some texture. And that looks pretty good. So what I need to do now is get rid of this white. Basically, delete the white, turn it into a transparent image there, uh, and then also make the image boundary a lot closer to this. So I think there's a, quite a few ways to do this. But my favorite way, the way I think is the fastest, is to actually save this as a separate image on your desktop and then open it again in Photoshop and then remove the white that way. So I'll go to File and Save for Web and save it just like that, the default settings there. And now I'll go back to where I saved it. Here's the image. And I'll drag it into Photoshop as a new document just up here. And now I can... Uh, shrink the uh, artboard a little bit here. I'll just draw a new artboard and then enter. It's a little more manageable of a uh, size. And uh, since the background layer is locked, uh, some versions you can unlock it. In CS5 you can't unlock the background layer. So what I'll do is uh, copy this here. So I'll go up to the corner and then duplicate layer. And OK. And then I'll make the background layer invisible. So we're just working on this copy here. And then I'll go over here to the magic wand. And uh, while it's selected on a tolerance of uh, 30, I'll just click there and then select similar. Uh, and then I can just delete and then deselect. And uh, there we go. Our watercolor element is now totally on a transparent background. And we can save it as a PNG. So I'll go to File, Save for Web, and then turn this to PNG. So there we go. So now we can use it in arrangements uh, and kind of cover up other elements and stack them with leaves and other flowers and stuff and make some uh, unique arrangements. So hopefully this is a pretty good overview uh, about the things you can make and some of the processes you might want to use. Feel free to send me an email or a message if you have any questions at all. I'll get right back to you. But uh, other than that, guys, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.